In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. Now, the way we open the episode is we do an introductory portion, so we talk about current events, scientific studies, talk about workouts. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. In today's episode, that lasted for about 40 minutes, and then we got into the questions. Now, for the viewers, I got my notes up here, so I'm going to let you know what happened in today's episode from beginning to end, okay? Ooh, so we start out by talking ride. about Dubai. Why are we talking about Dubai? Because uh, they host the UFC, and they do a lot of that kind of stuff over there. It's kind of cool. Then we talk about my interview yesterday on a podcast when a big spider came down from the ceiling and almost scared the poopins, the poopins out of me. Uh, now, the person hosting that podcast was Jason Phillips, a good friend of ours. He also owns the company NCI. This is an online nutrition coaching certification company. So if you're a trainer uh, or you want to be an online coach, and right now that market is exploding because gyms are shut down and people still need trainers. They still need help with their nutrition. You can go to NCI and get certified, but here's what they did for Mind Pump listeners. I'm going to read this off for you. Right now, they have a scholarship giveaway. So if you go to ncicertifications.com forward slash Mind Pump, you can enter the giveaway. Now, one we one winner is going to get a full scholarship, which includes level one and level two certifications, hormone, mindset certifications, the gut, thyroid, men's health, and women's health master classes. Tons and wow. tons of stuff. That's a lot, Sal. From this. Yeah, it's really cool. And there's a few partial scholarships uh, as well. I want to make sure I got that after Doug highlighted it. Thank you, Doug. Uh, then we talked about gyms closing again. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Gavin Newsom. Yeah. Uh, then we talked Nuisance. about progressive overload with form and technique. Now, progressive overload means you're adding weight to the bar normally, but you can do this without adding weight. Um, that led us to talk about home gym equipment, our favorite company for home gym equipment, PRX. They make racks that fold into the wall. They have great weights and dumbbells. And normally they're sold out because everybody's trying to buy their stuff right now. But they've got stuff in stock right yeah, now. And I, back. I'm pretty sure they'll be sold out again pretty soon, so you might want to act. Uh, here's the deal. we got a hookup for you. If you go to prxperformance.com forward slash mind pump, use the promo code mind pump, get 5% off. And if your purchase is over $500, we'll give you a free MAPS Prime program. Uh, then we talked about Bonus. Adam adding MAPS strong exercises to his routine. He was feeling a bit skinny, hmm. wanted to build some muscle. He wants to get huge. Started following MAPS strong. By the way, MAPS strong is 50% off this month. Keep listening. I'll give you the 50% off code. Then we talked about JFK Jr. Uh, and some conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Justin and I can't stop. Oh, man. I tried. I tried to stop. Sal. We're addicted to the You threw it back at to me. To the conspiracy theory. Yeah. So we have a lot of fun with that. Uh, I didn't want to let you down. After that, we get into the fitness stuff. Okay. So, all you fitness buffs, that's about 40 minutes into the episode. The first question we answer is uh, What are our tips and strategies for weak point improvement? So, if you have a weak body part, it isn't responding like the rest of your body. Listen to that part of the episode. The next question, this person says, uh, what's up with box squats? Do they hold value? How do I program those in my, into my routine? So a box squat is when you have a barbell on your back. You lower yourself slowly onto the box, pause, come back up. It does have some value. It has some unique value. We talk all about it in that part of the episode. The third question, this person says, look, I want to cut sugar from my diet. Uh, where do I start? Like, where's the first place I should go to mm. cut sugar? Uh, probably the gummy bears. Yeah, where it says sugar. Probably that. Yeah. And the, the final question, this person says, how do you go about increasing your maintenance calories? Uh, I lift weights. I'm a petite woman. How do you do this? So we talk about speeding up the metabolism in the last question of the episode. Now, also, I want to let everybody know, that map strong is 50% off. I said that at the beginning of the episode. So now I'm going to give you the 50% off code. Now, map strong is a phenomenal workout program designed to build muscle, strength, and speed up the metabolism. It's inspired by strongman training. So, what does this mean for you, the average lifter? You're going to do some traditional lifting and some non traditional lifting. Your body is going to love it, it's going to respond very well. In fact, this is one of our more popular programs among women because they get faster metabolism from it. Now, men like it because it makes them big and uh, and, and buff at the beach, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but it's a very, very effective program. Again, it's half off. Here's how you get the discount. 
Go to mapsstrong.com. That's M A P S S T R O N G.com. And then use the code STRONG50. That's S T R O N G 50. No space for that discount. Did you see that the we talked about the other day the UFC? So it did end up like setting records for so, reals. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so wow, it was oh, one wow. of the most one of the most watched pay per views ever of all time. So for fighting or just ever? Uh, I think in general, maybe Doug, maybe you could fact check me. The UFC two fifty one uh, pay per view. Breaker. Yeah, pay per view record. You could probably put something like that in there. You come up with that. I, I read the article. I can't remember if it did say all sports or just in, in paper. The highest one of the highest. Um, uh, UFC pay per views. I believe they charge more too. I think it was. Yeah. I get like a when they go through ESPN, I get a little bit of a deal on them, right? So if you have a ESPN app, I think you have to go through ESPN now. Yeah, that one, I think you did too, right? Could, yeah, like they they switched over to that, and so now everybody has to have an ESPN app. I know my friend was complaining about that, of course. Well, I mean, there's there's obviously pent up demand. Yeah. Nothing else on. I know it's the only sport <laughs> yeah. thing, only sport ball. Going yeah, it's on, like it's fighting. It's like you're the you're the 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 yeah. You're, what you're what, in prison bro, and there's a guy that kind of looks like a that. girl. It was like mean? an eighty. <laughs> She's, she's like, he's getting all the attention. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, there's something here. <laughs> it brings in 1.3 million sport, sports history. So that's wow. A, yeah. Well, good. I for mean, them. it was a great point. You, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Is that nobody. Nobody's got any sports to watch right now. So even if you're not a big fan, you're like shit. Any any sort of life just shows you how thirsty we are oh as a God. country, right? I know. Now, did they do this at a, one of those reservations because other states wouldn't? Dubai. Sanction? They did it on the island. Oh, oh. dude, Dana White's a genius. He, he, I know he is. You know? Do you know that Dubai? He's ahead of everybody. Dubai has a is a, has a huge uh in like market and interest in uh, mixed martial arts. They're a huge market. So Dubai has some of the- And bodybuilding too, yeah. right? Bodybuilding too. It's really interesting, right? Yeah. They have uh, some of the biggest submission grappling and jujitsu tournaments uh, in the world wow. are in Dubai. Bodybuilding. And I think it's because- Now, is Dubai, is that a is that a free society or is that is there like a, a king or queen or whatever? Does anybody know? I have no idea. I think it may be driven by the royal families there that have they have interests, so they they push. They're they, definitely wealthy. I know that much. Super wealthy. Wow. You ever seen pictures of yeah. Dubai like the you know, Lambos and like, shit on the fr- well, like thirty years ago versus now? Oh yeah. yeah. It's like it's like sand. Yeah, and I heard then, that one of the uh, one of the buildings they built to, to where you could ski inside. Like you basically have <laughs> snow pumped in there, and you can ski down a hill. Yeah, uh, That's crazy. I, I do know that. In, let me see. In po- the oh, desert, go back. What type of government is it? politics of the United Arab Emirates? Uh, takes place in a framework of a federal, presidential, and constitutional monarchy. Boy, that none of that makes sense together. <laughs> yeah. constitutional monarchy. A constitutional monarchy. <laughs> hey, everybody! I yeah. know I'm the king. Yeah. Don't here, worry. Here's a piece of paper, yeah. but really, I got last say. Don't worry. Yeah. I, here's here's all this, the reasons why I'll, I'll take care of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we want to change those rules. No, 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 no. no, uh, no, 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 no I no, control no. all that. But don't worry. It's I got all good. the pen. You guys can tell me things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I know. In if I'm not mistaken, in Dubai, you if you get caught with weed. They'll throw your ass in jail forever, something like that. Wow. Yeah, it's really crazy. That's really? Yeah. A little extreme. But yeah, and then I think alcohol might even be illegal if yeah, I'm not mistaken. But, yeah, I've heard that's it's tough to get. Uh, you, like you have to have a special oh that explains, membership or something. Probably explains why it's a good good place for bodybuilders. Then you can be totally focused over there, huh? <laughs> yeah, the only man. drugs you, you can get steroids though. I hear oh, like crazy. Steroids, like, yeah. yeah. No Isn't that funny? Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, I heard yeah, that they, steroids come dime a dozen out there, yeah, but they, you can't get alcohol or you can't get weed. They huh? Them, like what do they, what, what, they, what they get them uh, testosterone like prescription like no big deal. Mm-hmm. Right? Liquor licenses are not available to non residents, but it is possible for tourists and visitors to buy and drink alcohol in licensed venues. Licensed. Okay, you could. Yeah. But it is a punishable offense under the UAE law. Uh, interesting. Oh, look at that. To be under the influence of alcohol. Oh, so you could drink, you just can't get drunk. Well, what's what the a, point? What a waste yeah. of time. <laughs> <laughs> what, why would you even... <laughs> just for the calories? Like, what are we doing here? This is stupid. <laughs> yeah. You take a sip. Oh, you're yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, you're done. You, you Very wanna, good taste. Yeah, marijuana. Is, nobody. Yeah, look that up with marijuana, Doc. Let's see what they... Is weed legal in Dubai? Next yeah, time. oh, man. I can't read that. What do you think? What kind of eyes do you think I have, <laughs> Doug? Super focused eyes. Yeah, toughest marijuana laws around the world. 
I believe, oh, look at this, getting caught in Dubai with even the tiniest trace of cannabis, and I believe it can get you either executed what? or- What? Shut the fuck up. I'm not exaggerating. You're lying. But I am not lying. Come dude. on, guy. All right, Doug. You're going to have to- Cut your hands off or yeah. what? N n Oh, Get you a minimum mandatory sentence of four years. Oh, that's all it is? Uh, a, li a little less than <laughs> execution, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, pretty extreme. No, yeah. there, there's, there are countries yeah, you know, like four that. Four years is a lot, but yeah, there come are, on, but death? So you know, how they, you know how this works? So now I, I'm starting to remember. I did read about this once because I was considering going there, and then I said that right there made me say no. They don't, you don't even have to have cannabis on you. If they test your blood and you have a little bit of THC in your system, jail. No. Wow. Yeah. It stays in your blood for a long time. I know. So yeah. it's like you, you gotta yeah, like forget about not it. have any for months and then travel there. Do you think do you think in our future in our lifetime that we'll see like uh drugs get legalized? Do you think so? The way we're heading with like psilocybin now and obviously what has happened to weed in just the last decade, like do you think we're gonna get there? I don't think it's gonna go extreme. There'll be levels, I think. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. I think it's it was so or extreme. at least decriminalized. I shouldn't say you know. Mm. I, I I think we will. I do too. I, yeah. I, I think so. I do. I think this, they're they're starting to see that the that the too extreme uh, of a uh, you know the way that they regulate it is too extreme and it's causing more it's caused more problems. Yeah. And so they're probably gonna have it. What, scale what is the else? latest news on psilocybin? You normally keep us up to date on that. What's going on with what what states? And have you read anything recently with maps and everything? What's going on? Yeah, I know that there there's cities that have already decriminalized the use of uh, psilocybin. That doesn't mean it's legal. There's a difference. Right. Um, it, it, decriminalized means it's not legal still to sell and purchase, but it means that it's not treated. Um, like you know, punished severely. And like it, you might get a fine. And is like that. that that allows them to do like treat them with therapy and stuff now, right? Is that right? It, no, it's still illegal to do that. It's just decriminalized for personal use. But what it does, and here's the problem, because the federal government has a lot of these substances scheduled so harshly, it makes it very difficult to study. But luckily, uh, psilocybin is, is now they, they they've put it in a different category. It's not rescheduled, but the government is allowing a lot of studies done on it, mainly because of all the PTSD uh, soldiers. Yeah, it was yeah. Like 80% after yeah. one session. Crazy right? results. 80, yeah, there was like a crazy cure rate, yeah. which is really crazy. Dude, yesterday, I got to tell you guys a story, right? Hmm. So yesterday I'm on uh, a podcast. Uh, I was on uh, Jason Phillips' podcast, by the way. Um, what's it called? All In? I think it's called All In. Yeah. Anyway, great podcast. All in Nutrition. And uh, they're doing an interview with me, and it's uh, you know him and his co-host, and- I'm sitting there, and about halfway through the podcast, right, I'm in my flow, I'm doing my talking thing or whatever, and I look up right in front of Justin's, where you're sitting right now, Justin. Okay. Freaking biggest spider I've ever seen uh. comes down <laughs> on a single string of web. I wish I that was me. And like it's just I sabotaged. And it's that. just hanging there, like with its big old <laughs> like claw legs. Did and you scream like a girl? No, or? no, no. I kept going, but I had my wow. eye on it. And then Doug a couple times got up, and the gust of wind that he caused would make it swing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like no, dude. You're like blowing it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't swing over hey, here. Hey Doug, speaking of uh, Jason and NCI, what is the thing that they're running? They're doing another cool give free giveaway or course or class. What do they got going on for us this month for our trainers and people that want to learn? Yeah, there's for uh, our smarty pants I, I, people. I think there's like a free hormone course. There's a couple others. Wait well, for Doug to read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's okay. He's uh, making you work this today, Doug. Come on, TV. He's still up on the other thing. What are you doing over there? Huh? What's going on? <laughs> Don't stress him are out. On, are you on Pornhub again? No. Are we trying to record? Stop. Huh? This guy. Stop stressing him yeah. out. He's got like hold five on, different Five years we've been doing this. This guy's starting to get an easy uh, street over there. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, that's the, 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 the wall in China. That's, yeah. Give yeah. me a second. We got the, <laughs> the window got closed somehow. Uh, yeah, and so, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm Just, beginning to believe that yeah. Doug is a, a an advanced machine whose electronics uh, mess with electronics that he works on. Because shit tends to go wrong. <laughs> yeah. In especially, weird when, ways. especially when you rush me. Yeah. Uh, all right. So there is a scholarship giveaway. If you go to ncicertifications.com forward slash mind pump, one winner will receive a full scholarship, which includes level one and two certifications, hormone and mindset certifications, and the gut, thyroid, men's health, and women's health master classes. Wow. So they're also going to be giving away some partial scholarships based mm -hmm. on submissions. So, yeah, well, you, okay. So, uh, you know, I was on their podcast, right? And here's the thing I like about Jason and the things that they focus on. The the series uh, that they were working uh, that they were doing on their podcast had to do with 
uh, nutritional freedom or the kind of the behavioral aspects of diet. And, uh, you know, he is hitting the nail on the head. And he, they constantly do with what they focus on teaching their, their coaches what to focus on. Because uh, I think trainers and coaches make a, one of the biggest mistakes you can make as a trainer or a coach when you're working with everyday people is to assume that the answer is all in the, the, the numbers. Here's mm-hmm. your calories, here's your proteins, here's your fats, here's your carbs. You got to cut your calories to lose weight, increase your calories to gain weight. Here's your meal plan. Uh, plug in, plug it in, and, and, yeah. and just get rid it. of all these foods and do this whole new thing. Do you yeah. remember? Do you remember how unexcited you were to meet Jason the first time we were going to meet him? I did. I was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, that's what those are my. I thought he was like that. Yeah. yeah well, those are, those are my favorite people, right? When we meet somebody who we're like, ah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Sam, yeah. He was a model. Like, come on. Let's. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was an Amber Crombie model. Oh, don't you remember that? Oh, yeah. We talked oh, about that the first time. I do remember that. Justin's yeah. Lying. And I, and Justin I, was the one that wanted to meet him because yeah, of that. Yeah. I remember when we and I remember telling you guys because I believe I was the one that set it up. Cargo and shorts. Sal was like, "Who's this guy again coming in?" I tell, "What? Oh man!" And yeah. we were all down. But then when he came in, I remember and we were having a great conversation about coaching and nutrition. And you know, it's it's rare that we meet another trainer like that that I think just really, really gets. It. And you could tell that he's got a, a lot of experience, hands on. That that to me is that always. I mean, we've met a lot of brilliant minds, right? That have gone through a lot of schooling, has a lot of certifications, degrees in the field, and 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 can speak really well to whatever topic related to fitness. But then there's the people that you know, you know, have worked with a lot of yeah. people. He's refined it down to what matters. Yes. It comes across that way, and that's that's refreshing. Well, that's exactly what I was getting at. the 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 part that you coach and work on is not the numbers. That's that's basic. That's easy. You could go online and get numbers for yourself and figure that out. It's all the behavioral stuff. It's all that's what you're coaching people through. Uh, if it was all about numbers and follow a meal plan or whatever, there would never be any failure rate with diets. They would, everybody would have no obesity issues. It would have no health issues that are, you know, deal with It's food. hard though, because that's what all of our certifications and the schooling teaches. You that's know? what I mean. I mean, they, they, they teach all that part, unless you went to school <clears throat> for psychology or behavioral science or anything like that, but which most trainers didn't. Most trainers go down the kines and sports medicine and physical education type of direction and all your national certifications. So, you know, it took me a really long time uh, before that all came together. I, I've, I've said this a million times. Every time I meet trainers and talk to them, I always say the same thing. I say, it's not what you know, it's how you can get the person to understand it fully and implement it uh, into their everyday lives. That's the most important thing. What you know means nothing if you can't do any of that. It means nothing at all. Otherwise, you're just a you're a fancy Google search uh you know you're not really a good uh coach so you guys see the new mandate that came out by gavin newson like wasn't that the the the, the closure of today these these other yeah these other counties for gyms and for churches it's it's statewide now right yeah so so explain this to me justin because this is your i i saw our good buddy up at uh santa cruz power fitness Uh uh-huh uh shout out to them and their gym I saw a post that somebody did that said they were remaining open, and I thought all of California is is it is close has to shut down. Yeah, it's- I think that was the case when it was county by county uh, because Santa Cruz was one of those that uh, we had the lowest cases in the area, so they could get away with it, and that like everything was like free and open. And so I think now that might have changed. So yeah. it it is supposed to change, but I just saw the post that was referring oh, just recently. To, yeah, this was yesterday. Oh, I don't know referring to the whole state being shut down, but they're going to remain open. So. Which brings me to the next question that I have for you guys is, do you think we're going to start seeing this? Are we going to, I mean, I already know, you know, the gray market, black, what do you want to call it? When your, your, your hairstylist is cutting hairs out of, oh, out of their, yeah, out of their yeah, garage yeah. now. And do, so are we going to start to see people that say, fuck this, I'm going to, we have customers that are willing to pay me that are going to do this. I wouldn't be surprised. Of course. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Of course. You are dealing with people's uh, mental health and their livelihood. Yeah. So, you know, look, I, if you're in a, a situation where you're not, you're okay with not working for six months or a year, you know, that's great. Yeah, what is it, 5% of the population? Most people are not. Yeah. And so what you're doing is you're forcing people, and you're forcing people by law to basically starve, destroy everything that they've built. Uh, I think people are going to take the risk 
of 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 getting caught uh, because what what options do they have? Yeah, it's crazy. I feel so bad for some of these industries. The gym industry in California is is screwed. Yeah. They're totally screwed. You know, I, I I said before, like I think gyms, if they ran their business as well, they should be able to survive like a month or yeah, two. Yeah, but closed. now we're getting yeah, now no, we're getting. Is, I don't yeah. I don't know anybody. This that is runs, blatantly like yeah, how how can you come out of this? Yeah, I don't know any business that runs well, so well that they could not be open for six months and yeah. and be and survive. Right. That was my my original statement was listen, it, this is this whole COVID thing is going to expose a lot of people that were probably not operating uh, that great or weren't being conservative with their money and and making sure they have some stockpiled for a rainy day. But now you're asking, you know, businesses to go four, five, potentially six months with no and there's a difference, right? Like when you're when you're operating so a business, you you get to especially if you've been doing it for years, you start to go, okay, this is a good month, this is a bad month. Let's pretend we have three of the three to six of the worst months in a row. I should always have about that c- to cover all my costs. Mm-hmm. But nobody thinks to themselves that I will have to stop creating any business for you know zero dollars for three four five six months well, and, you, and a lot of your crippling. Expen- and your expenses oftentimes don't stop yeah a lot of these people still may have to pay rent and pay other fees of course so it's impossible it's totally imp- they're going to cripple people uh long term now i know what other people are going to say on the other end of it they're going to say well people die from the virus and people yeah i get that i totally get that which is why right. you know look we we're in a free society or we're not in a free society here's what you say to people here's your risks now we know the risks now here's a deal you have the right to take and risk your own life first off you don't have a right to risk other people's lives so if a business says you can't go in there without taking your temperature, wearing a mask, and all that stuff. That's their right. right. But you have a right to risk your own life, and your customers have a right to make that choice to come in and whatever. Now, that doesn't mean that gyms are going to open and all of a sudden make tons of money. What'll, what would happen is gyms would open, and they're still going to struggle. Right. But but forcing them to, to totally shut down again, not— Did, I, you, I, did what, you see the article shared in our forum, too? That uh, Or no, you know who shared it? Not in our forum. Or maybe I did see it in our forum, too. Um Who's our buddy, uh, Carnivore Meat? What can I think of his? Uh, Paul Saladino. Paul Saladino. All right. Yeah. Did you see his post no. about uh, Pepsi and McDonald's like giving uh, meals out for people that come and get tested? No. Uh-uh. Yeah. Did you find the irony in that, right? Wow. Isn't that funny? Yeah. yeah. They were, they did they held a uh, check that out Doug, look that up. Say uh McDonald's uh McDonald's gives away for covid testing uh, and you'll see So it. so they'll test so you'll get you'll get a free test or if you come in to get tested yeah, they're, they're, they'll, they'll give you food. Yeah. yeah. Here's a Big Mac. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can kind of see a little bit of the irony. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Come on. Yeah. That's totally ironic. Hey, if you drive drunk, we'll give you a free test, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like that. Try and beat it next time. Yeah, yeah. I, I get that. You know, you, you know, the, here's the thing. When you're talking about a very calm complex thing like uh the, when i say the economy by the way people think just money the economy is how we 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 work together and how society literally operates yeah, like right? how we're doing when you're considering when you're doing that and you're considering uh forcefully shutting things down you can't just let the infectious disease experts run that i definitely think they should be part of the conversation for sure mm-hmm. but right now they're the ones running it all you're not having anybody out they're not they're not all coming together and saying well, okay here what's the risk of this what's the benefit of this how can we do this what are the long-term effects all it is is how do we slow down infections and there's no it feels like there's no consideration for and they've been wrong stuff. already yeah dude. multiple times so yeah. eh, you know like it, let's just uh Let's just all use our critical thinking. That's what I would like to say. Yeah, dude, makes me really mad. Hey, this uh, this morning, um, I was working out, and I remembered a uh, a technique that I used to do back in the day to uh, improve the effectiveness uh, of my workout. I don't think I've ever really communicated it too much on the podcast. I, I don't do it very often, but one thing you can do if you are you know advanced and you want to kind of take your workout to another level or add a little bit of novelty is take a weight that you know you could really push through and get 15 reps. Like, you know, like, okay, if I really max this out, I'll get 15 reps. Then go short of that and say, I'm going to do 10 reps. But the goal is to do the form and technique so that 10 reps is all you can do. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'll take a weight, like, you know, let's say I'm curling, I'll I'll make up a number, 35-pound dumbbells, and I know if, like, I push hard, I can get 15 reps. My goal now is 
can I make 10 reps feel like yeah. 15 reps? And so I'm just squeezing and stretching. This and is how I slow. this is how I trained almost all of my clients. So because I put so much emphasis on form and technique over load load and adding more load and adding more load is I would put a weight and if a client was like, oh, I think I could have done more, I would say, well, instead of us adding more, when you get to the last three or four reps, really slow down the tempo and make that weight feel really challenging. Mm -hmm. Like it's like you're exactly what you're saying. I just find that as a, as a great technique, when, especially when you're coaching to form and technique or be, training a beginner. And even if you're not like a, a super beginner, I mean, you're talking about someone as advanced as you still utilizing. I still utilize that technique all the time, but I find it uh, very valuable for the coaches and trainers out there that instead of just keep adding load to clients because they go, oh, 15 is really easy. I can add more, add more. Be like, oh, okay, well, this is what I want you to do. When you get to 10, those last five, slow them down as slow as you possibly can because you're far better off doing that because what will in inevitably happen if you keep adding load to a client that says, I can easily do this 15 and you keep going, eventually you'll reach the point where it, it's challenging for them. And the first thing to go is form mm -hmm. because they haven't, they haven't got those good habits and patterns mm -hmm. ingrained yet. So the minute it goes just a little challenging load wise, right away their form deviates. So instead of doing that, you coach them and teach them to slow down the repetitions. I think it's the best way yeah. to progressively overload. Uh, I know you know progressive overload is a is a fundamental principle of uh, of resistance training. Meaning, you know your body gets stronger and better, and so you you make it you add more weight, you make it harder each time you work out, and this continues your body progressing on the progress you know the progression ladder, if you will. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to do it is by not adding weight. And by simply making the exercise feel more difficult with form and technique, and it's safer. It's the safest way to do progressive overload. It also helps you emphasize uh, your range of motion, your squeeze, and your stretch, which are very important for, for, for muscle growth and development. It's a really, really smart way of doing it. It's a yeah, real smart it, way of doing it. It would be cool to see uh, you know, people being competitive with that in terms of like doing an exercise, but like who could have the best form, maintain the best form as you then, you know, add more load to it. I mean, cause this is one of those things in terms of the ego portion of it going into the gym where, uh, you, the, the biggest thing you're trying to do is keep stacking weight. Like mm -hmm. that, that's, I just want to see myself stacking more weight. Uh, when the mentality going in of how I can, you know, keep and maintain this, this pristine form, uh, while I'm also like, gradually kind of working my way up with weight. I mean, it would be rad to see that be popular. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of weight, I want to plug one of our partners right now, PRX. They, uh, so I, those that have been trying to get you know, weights online during this whole COVID thing, it's just been insane. I believe they were six plus weeks uh, back oh, yeah. ordered. And uh, I just had a client friend of mine who reached out to me and said, oh, by the way, just so you know, your your partner, PRX, you're able to now order uh, plates and weights. So that was oh, one of the things. Oh, plates you, back. Yes. Yeah. So if you were somebody who had chopped for them in the previous couple months and uh, was turned off by the fact that they were probably back ordered for six plus weeks, um, I think they've now caught up to all their orders and taking more orders again. Yeah, it's a huge demand, for, especially now that gyms are closing again in California and other places. Uh, I'm sure the demand for at home equipment is con is going to just continue uh, to rise. I my 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 best back workout, uh, one of my favorite back workouts, I should say, is on the PRX pull up handles because it has. Uh, I, love I, that. I love that. Pull yeah, up. I think there's like six different grip. Yeah. and hand positions on it. Mm -hmm. And so actually Doug and I went through this workout a couple times. Uh, Doug's a great workout partner, by the way. He doesn't, he goes hard. There's no in between. Because the way he spots. He just, <laughs> he just, <laughs> he just goes hard. So we go, he we did, you back. Yeah, I did, I did. We came over. I remember yeah. the last Tahoe workout. So you guys spotting each other kind of funny. Spotting each other working out. Uh -huh. yeah, well, you know, we're let, really close. I need to work out with someone serious. You know what I mean? Anyway, so uh, I, you start with the real narrow I grip. No shade. And yeah, so, yeah. There's <laughs> no pants on. That's what I thought was weird. <laughs> huh? It gives you better range motion <laughs> so you do your the way the way i used it right so all these different grips and you, if i go all out with pull-ups i'll probably do i don't know 15 to 20 or something like that so what we doug and i did is we did six reps on each uh grip handle so six reps in the middle then he would do six reps in the middle and then we'd move them out and six reps six reps and we kept doing that with each position moving all the way out all the way back in all the way out all the way back until you can't perform six reps anymore. The pump 
from doing that was oh, I'm sure. yeah it was was, was pretty crazy. Hey, speaking of workouts, I like to share when uh, I have like little epiphanies, and uh, I was training. I was just kind of randomly picking some exercises that we we were just you know this month like strong is on sale, so we were talking about uh, you know the the different exercises that are in there and how much we love them. And circus press is like one of my favorite. And I what I did, and this isn't all from strong; these are just some exercises from there. So I I started off and I uh, did just two um uh two sets of the uh suspension trainer we're just kind of warming up priming my upper back then i went into snatch grip uh deadlifts and then i went into circus press and then i went into a bench press uh why i'm sharing this because i don't think i've ever ordered my exercises in that order yeah, before usually not you wouldn't do an overhead before a, right yeah. right and so um you know my, had such a strong bench and what i realized from it afterwards was one kind of priming, uh, you mean retracting from the rows real quick, the stabilization of the upper back, uh, in the snatch grip, and then the shoulder stability of the circus press. I mean, when you have, uh, issues forward shoulder, or you notice like sometimes clicking or pain in your shoulder, when you bench press, a lot of that is because you have instability in the shoulder, and then you have the inability to really retract the shoulder girdle while you go into your bench press. And doing those movements before gave me like this great pump and prime. Oh, really? Before I went into bench, and I had an incredible bench. Were you able to get 135 up finally? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> five times, though. Five times. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, That's a new record yeah, for you. Yeah. That's four reps more than last yeah, time. Yeah, impressive. Know, but I just, it, it, I wasn't doing it with those intentions, right? You had no idea. Right. So I love that. So do I. And that's yeah. why I like to share it because that doesn't happen that often for yeah. us. We've been doing this for a long time. And I thought, oh, wow, that was. And then when I unpacked it and thought about it, I was like, oh, of course, circuit express. I mean, your circuit I was circus pressing, I think, 65, 70 pounds over my head yeah. and stabilizing above my head. So think about the the stability that my, my shoulder, waking oh, yeah. everything up in my shoulder is. And then the snatch grip and then the rows to really prime my upper back set me up for an incredible bench oh, session. Awesome. Yeah, you mentioned the suspension trainer. I, I got back into that and with the Olympic rings as well. So between the T-Rex and Olympic rings and then uh, also kettlebells, like that's just been one of my things. But uh, like to go through like, like instability again with all these like same types of moves puts provides such a different stimulus and my body's like oh man like i haven't done it in a long time dude that, that's how i felt when i went and benched it yeah. was it was yeah. not like, something i was sore playing. and all these like really deep muscles you, See, know? you know what i want costals and you, whatnot you know what i want to hear right now justin you yeah. could totally say no but before we start the podcast you're like dude that conspiracy theory <laughs> video so crazy like oh god uh, i have what a lot you, what are you guys watching hold now? on hold on a second adam just oh, and i god. are gonna talk we have a lot of fun with this <laughs> you guys are gonna turn me into eddie bravo over here, <laughs> no. so <laughs> so this is that one so there was that one series this is the same series that you and i watched the beginning Someone yeah we sent just us. watched the beginning and i kind of had problems with with some of the, what was it called the, the fall stuff. of the cabal yeah in the beginning but then it got like really crazy like i mean it's really long i didn't realize it was so long and i don't I, like the way it started out though no it was, starts out by literally uh, no joke it's as if someone said hey can you take every conspiracy theory yeah, on just the internet smash them all into one thing and, and connect them all together yeah, yeah minus like flat earth and moon landings and bigfoot and you know yeah yeah so they, they, yeah they didn't go to like the crazy it was all just like mainly government conspiratorial stuff and uh but like like one thing i don't even want to talk about the whole thing because you, you know you go watch you do do your own research whatever uh, research, re research. Yeah, yeah. And you can't use that. Like, like, look stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so one of them was uh, with like the whole JFK Jr. thing at the end. Like, it was like, so he, he had a magazine publication. I guess it's called George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I remember that. Okay, so there's this one issue that uh, somebody found on the internet that was like. Uh, had Bill Gates, he did a whole interview with Bill Gates in it, and it goes into detail of like how, <laughs> like the title of it's like world domination and like how to like, how like Microsoft's taking over and how they're like so successful right now and all that stuff. And it was just like, you know, it's, it's just like pumping his tires, mm -hmm. like, you know, in terms of the article, but there was like a lot of really weird stuff in there that, that, that has like relevance today. Uh, and like, in, in, and then there was a, an, an adjacent article that was like, they were trying to pin them together, but it wasn't together. But here, I'm going to read what it said, uh, because I had to like, I had, I had to, to check this out once I saw the, the image of it. It says, 
So basically, they're they're talking about like viruses and things and potentials for uh, things to be concerned about. And this is an old article. This is really yeah, it's a really okay. old article. And it says worst case scenario in in overpopulated planet choked to extinction by a lung attacking virus. Mm. Yeah, yeah, in there. And then and then on the on the the title of this too. So it says. Bill Gates talks to John Kennedy about Murdoch money and world domination, and then underneath it, it has um, it has in indictment day. Will Hillary get busted? And it's just like all these like weird like like it's it's a conspiratorial like like orgy of th- of information on this one <laughs> on this one article. I was like, oh wow, this is crazy. Yeah, have you and ever- how old did you say it was? Oh man! Oh, oh, these are like these are really old, right? Early two thousands, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. You know what my favorite are for the the for those predictive? I liked that one the best. So, so these, so this is like a a category of conspiracies where what is it, Doug? What is it? There it is, Doug. February nineteen ninety seven. Oh wow, ninety seven. That was a good year. So high school graduation ninety seven. Yeah. Okay, so uh, these are I like this category of conspiracies where they go back in time. And they show something and say, they knew that this thing was going to happen back then in the future. Like Nostradamus kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, the best is The Simpsons. Oh, really? Uh, you never seen like everything from The Simpsons episodes that they're like, they'll show, oh, this this aired in 1998. And look, they predicted the collapse of the whatever, or they uh-huh. predicted 2008 and they predicted, oh, dude, everything. It's all in there. Everything. Well, dude, they covered everything. Yeah. The Simpsons literally, like their writers, like covered every subject matter you possibly can. Uh, exactly. Yeah. It's Doug, the longest running uh, Doug, share with the time. audience what you got up there for books. I, I'm trying to see what you got for recommendations. Like, no, give, I think it's me, recommended. No, no, no. It's, uh, those are recommended because yeah. it's on Doug's On the thing. bottom. Uh, yeah. What, what are they recommending you? Let me. Hear, I want to hear what you've been into. Let's see. Uh, How to Warehouse deal with- of Wealth. Well, okay. Bank on Yourself book, Case for IBC, Flip, uh, ABC of Real Estate Investing, The Coaching Habit, another book called Grit. Yeah. How, oh, what's that last one? How to Grit. deal with immense sex appeal. Yeah, wow. yeah, I know. The, right. the pain and, of being and hot. Then backdoor bandits. Is that what that's? <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah. Wow! <laughs> You're on a roll, yeah. Adam. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I feel like that's an actual title backdoor that you bandits. saw at one point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're just wearing handkerchiefs, you know. Yeah. Just like, hey. yeah. So yeah, literally, this the is front door's not open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. God. You ever seen that picture? There was a, a meme that went around. It was like a plan. And parenthood uh, picture, and on it it said, uh, you know, uh, for for it said something like for planned for family planning, please use rear entrance. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, like a oh. Planned Parenthood, yeah. <laughs> oh. You know, right now is like because of the weirdness of what's going on, and because people's mental health is not the best. You know, and I, I don't blame it. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, Can, it, this is consp- this is like the perfect storm for conspiracy uh, it, theories. It's ripe for it. Yeah, it it, it drives it. Well, because there's real stuff going on that's that's crazy, and you're trying to make sense out of all the anarchy and the chaos and whatnot. And so it's like you, you're just trying to like plot all these dots together, and that you know they don't always go together. And so I have to like check that that train of thought a lot of times because uh, it is it's there I mean there's a lot of uh, research that like people do get uh, mentally like they get yeah. all these like issues uh, because of all the stress now what's crazy is that when every once in a while one of these conspiracy theories it turns out to be true Pro- which only makes itself yeah which only strengthens them right only makes them think right. aha well that's why I'm sticking with the whole sex trafficking thing because they're really going hard on that right now which is good dude yeah they're they're not publishing anything like news isn't saying anything about Wayfair which Bro. yeah that which always I'm like, come on yeah. Bro, that I yeah, so, but they can't though. I mean, you get so if they well, if Wayf if we oh, find right. out that Wayfair had nothing to do with it, regardless if they were really yeah, up there because all the lawsuits. Yeah. Oh yeah, so they so they, they can't even report on Dude, it. Dude, right uh, the 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 the, the, the tr- human trafficking market in the world is something like the, the market is worth something like it's uh, over a hundred billion dollars. Yeah. What? Over a hundred billion dollars. Insane. There are there are countries with very active slaves. Slave trading. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, America is the biggest market for uh, for pedophilia trafficking. Um, Dude. I had no idea it was as big and as bad as, as like as big as it is. A hundred billion dollars. Okay, one more Worldwide. person to look into is uh, Laura Gaylor. So she was part. You know the Amber Alert that's on your phone, yeah, yeah. and everything. Like there's like an, a company that put all that together, and she was like responsible for that. 
literally got like in prison for uh, being a sex trafficker. What? And then got reduced sentence, a pardon from Bill Clinton and, and Hillary Clinton. Oh, wow. Well, geez. Yeah. And so that's real. The, so she got pardoned? Wait, so she st- she started the Amber Alert thing? Yeah. yeah. And she was part of like this Christian organization that uh, went down there oh my in God. Haiti to, to, to for kids. That's what makes this even more it's sick. It's so and, evil sick, and sinister. Sick and twisted is it's like, these people that are posing as doing good things for- Well, exactly. Where, oh. Think about it this way, right? Where would you find you know people with alcohol problem, problems? You're yeah. gonna find a larger percentage of them in bars. Daycare. Sen- well, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah so where? About- <laughs> yeah. So where? We're talking about alcohol now. Yeah. It's where? Yeah, where are you gonna yeah. find these 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 predators? These creeps? You're gonna find them in situations where they're gonna be around more children. So I would imagine that there's probably gonna be a higher incidents of them being around, you know, in daycares yeah. or in schools. Or I, I guess you're right. I guess, I guess my, uh, you know, my empathetic brain wants to think that these people have like a sick addiction and it's, it's like this, this mental disconnect and disorder they have versus thinking of them like actual predators like that, which mm. obviously proves that theory, right? That it's, look, they are predators you, because look, if you were actively I mean, finding them and selling them, yes. I mean, yeah. It's and, like, and you have to get more evil than that. You have to be going into that whole plan with that intention, right? Like you, if you have, if you get to a place where you're, you're trafficking kids and you started the Amber Alert, it means you probably started the damn thing with that intention yeah. from the very beginning. I know, I, right. look, I am, I am 99.9% of the time against the death penalty, but when it comes to this kind of stuff, it's like, give me the switch, I'll pull I, it myself. Know, I don't know if that's better or to let them live in there because that's the one, that's the people that ever get jacked oh, yeah. by everybody. Yeah, they're the first if you go, in, if you go in and they find out that you mess with kids, you're getting fucked up for your entire time in there. I'd almost rather that. Right. I'm almost rather, I think the general population. Yeah, I think letting them, I think letting them go out out by putting them to sleep, you know, is an easy way out. I think li- making them live in jail is a better route, so they can get the shit beat out of them oh, for fucking uh, forty years. You oh, know? it's it's uh, it's absolutely Agreed. it's absolutely terrible. But I had no idea that that market was. But did you guys know that there's we're breaking records right now for how many yeah, uh, people are getting arrested? Arrests. It's amazing. I love yeah, it. under the and, and this isn't me, you know, uh, be bring pro Trump or anything like that. I really don't care uh, about that. But under his administration. He's no. uh, increased the, the, the investigations and the arrests uh, by, I don't know, some, several hundred percent. I also yeah. saw that he was, who was, who was posting this? I, I don't I care know. who's doing it, as long as it's getting done. Exactly. I, I saw that he had the least amount of pardons from any president, too. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, uh, of, of taking, letting somebody out of prison earlier, uh, Susan Rosenberg, uh, I, I just saw this because, the, you know, like I said, this is like conspiracy theory time or whatever. And every time I read one that is interesting to me, I try and fact check it. And yeah. usually they're they're garbage. Right. Every once in a while you read it and you're like, oh shit, this is real. Interesting. So this woman, Susan Rosenberg, was a domestic terrorist. So she was charged with domestic terrorism, was part of a a what they can what they called a far left extremist uh group, a communist, pro communist group. And she was charged with bombings and stuff like that. Sent to jail for something like 58 or 60 years. Okay, so it's convicted. She got, the, the courts found her guilty. Mm. She's going to jail for essentially the rest of her life, right? 16 years into her sentence, guess who pardons her? Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. Now, you want to guess what she's doing right now? This mm. is the crazy part. I'm not making this up. I looked it up. Totally true. She's on the board of the official Black Lives Matter uh, group. Wow. She literally works with them. Now, this isn't super crazy when you consider that the founders uh, have come out and actually said themselves that they're trained Marxists. I saw that. Yeah. I couldn't. That's believe. real. Yes, yeah. that's been very yeah. Yeah, The yeah. founder of it straight up said that. It yep, wasn't. Yep. I thought that was like one of those situations where something was taken out of context and somebody like. No, 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 no that's real. No, I watched the interview where she said that and I was like. Yeah. Wow, nobody's really. I didn't feel like anybody's really talking about this. No. And is that not a big deal to anybody? Well, it's. I mean, it's your belief system. In, okay. Of course, your belief system. That's a very strong ideology. Well, right, right. It'd right. be all right if people knew that was you know who was behind it. But it's like you know, I, I don't even think a lot of people even know that. No, you know what makes me really sad that, that this is the part that really makes me sad. This is what, and, and I'm just. This is historically. This is what the what Marxists uh, do, is they take real issues and then they hijack them. So, like in the Soviet Union, they 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 you know they turned the the classes against each other, and they said these people are being oppressed by these wealthy people over there. I'm sure some of that was happening, but they ended up using that to fuel this revolution that ended up killing, 
you know, you know, tens of millions of people by starvation and by lots of different, you know, throwing people in gulags. And we all know the, the horrors of the of the past Soviet Union. Same thing in China. You yeah. know, uh, Mao, uh, his, you know, what do they call it? His great leap forward, he called it, killed, uh, I don't know, 50 million uh, Chinese people. And what makes me really sad is if people, and I don't know this for sure. I, I see some of their platform and it smells like Marxism. But what makes me sad is I'll take a, 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 a real movement, the anti-racism movement, which I think is a good movement. I think collectivism is terrible. and Racism is a very, very ugly yeah, form a problem. of it. Very, okay. I'm, 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 I think it's a good thing to, to push to be anti-racist and to weed it out and to continue to, to you know, push people to not have collectivist ideas about each other where you give someone a, a set of, of traits and characteristics just based off of their skin color. But what I what makes me sad is that Marxists, and this is just part of their playbook, they'll take something like that and they'll hijack it and use that movement to push yeah. uh, their other stuff forward, pretending like that that's what they really care about. And I hope that's not what that official group uh, is doing, You know, now knowing that they have, that they're actual trained Marxist, that's their words, and that they have someone like Susan Rosenberg uh, on their board. That's the mm. part that really makes me sad. Yeah, that's crazy. First question is from Mr. Dave O.C. What are your tips and strategies for weak point improvement? Oh, weak body parts or lagging body part improvement. The first step you can take is to train it at the beginning of your workout. Um, that's If you're doing like a, a workout where you're training multiple body parts in a workout, or you're doing a full body workout, which is what we typically recommend for most people, just gets people the best results. Mm. Train that body part first, even if it's a small body part, even if it's your biceps or triceps or calves. hamstrings or calves. The hardest part is admitting you have a weakness. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> Step one, admit. Yeah. That's yeah. The first part. <laughs> but yeah, hit it first. Studies show that this actually works, and it's been done by bodybuilders forever. Well, so similar like, advice yeah. to that and uh, is – uh, worked for me uh, when I started implementing this probably, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago when I started to really sort of focus on weak body parts. Um, I think everybody uh, is consistent for a while, falls off, consistent, falls off. It's, I mean... Common. Right, yeah. very, very common. And uh, the pattern that I, I would fall into early years or the first you know decade of training is fall off for a few days or a week or maybe a couple of weeks or even a month. And then when I start back up again, I, I don't go, oh, what did I do last? Pick up right where I left off. I always go start back at my favorite of course, muscle group. And so what tends to happen is the, the weak body parts, your least favorite, um, just get trained the least. Mm -hmm. And so it, part of it is just having that mental discipline of, okay, I'm going to agree that if I fall off even for just a few days or a week and get back in the swing of things, I'm not going to pick up back right where I left off. I'm going to pick up well, my weak body part first and mm -hmm. always start the week that way. So if you're running like a split routine, I'm starting the, the week always with my weak body part. If I'm running a full body routine, I'm always starting the workout with the weak body part. Yeah, that's it. more volume, more frequency for the weaker body part uh, is a great strategy. Uh, another one, and this is a this is a uh, this is one that you know I actually I've done it a little bit in the past, but Adam talked about it uh, years ago on the podcast. I thought it was really smart. Unilateral training, or when you're training that body part that's weak. Allow the weak body part to dictate the amount of reps you're going to do. So this is for people who have a weak body part that tends to be uh, on one side. So I have one shoulder, one bicep, one tricep doesn't match the other one. Work the weak one first. Allow that one to dictate the intensity uh, for the other body part. And then the, the last one, this one's my favorite, prime your body yeah. before mm -hmm. you work out. Oftentimes you have a body part that doesn't respond because you're not connecting well enough to that body part. Like, for example, let's say it's your chest. Well, when I do um, bench press, it's not just my chest I'm working. It's in my chest, my shoulders, my triceps. And if my chest is weak, then my shoulders and my triceps will probably do more of the work. But if I prime my chest properly and focus on feeling the chest, then I can make the, the bench press much more chest effective. I find that most common with calves, chest, back. Yeah. Those, sure. those, those are the ones that, uh, if, if you're already prioritizing it, right. Like, and you're still struggling and still a weak point, 
there's a good chance that uh, your your secondary muscles are taking over more of the load and priming would could be a game changer for it's you. It's going to be a discipline because nobody likes to focus on their weakness all the time. And like it's, it's a lot more like I'm always pulled into things that I'm more comfortable with and like I know I'm strong with. I want to have a good workout. My workout is going to be good determining whether or not I feel like I was strong in that workout and I accomplished uh, my goals for that. But so it's a totally different mindset is to really put that in the forefront front and and give it that kind of attention that it needs and prime it and, and be diligent about consistency yeah absolutely um consistency is a huge one with the body which is uh, you know one of the, the points that uh, that adam brought up. here's the, the last one i'll say we, we i talked about priming i'll give you an example of a way you can prime a weak body part um now priming can and typically is very individualized so if you have maps prime follow the compass and and do the priming that's best for your body that'll help but if you want some general advice, try doing an isolation exercise for the weak body part first, then go to the compound lift. That's a form of priming that helps you feel the muscle or at least the target muscle you're trying to work on. And you can also do isometrics and, and take it even a step further yeah. like and make a, a full workout around isometrics, which has great benefits to it and also like really puts that kind of attention uh, to the recruitment process that it needs to even wake up. Next question is from Daniel Past 98 do box squats hold value over traditional back squats? And would there be a reason to add them into a program if the overall goal was improving leg definition and size? I, I learned about box squats, or at least I, I applied box squats to my routine later on uh, in my workout routine. Never did them up until I'd say I got to my 30s. And, you know, studying power lifters, I said to myself, you know, why don't I do some of these you know, what are considered powerlifting only movements, even though I'm not going to compete in powerlifting, maybe they have some carryover for muscle development. And, you know, if they do them, there must be some value. So I included them in my routine and I had huge gains from the box squats. Huge. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know what they are, a box squat, literally you have a box or a bench behind you. You back up with the barbell, you sit down controlled. You don't want to plop down. You want to sit down controlled, pause on the bench or the box, Almost like you're just sitting on it for a second. You maintain, just cut all momentum. Main, yes, maintain tightness and then come back up. So here's what happens. Here's where the value, I think, comes from the box squats. Um, when you're lowering a weight and then you reverse direction and come back up, there's some energy that's stored in the muscle as it lengthens that you then get on the rebound on the way up. Mm -hmm. With the box, you stop at the bottom and remove that. So you're not going to be able to squat as much. You have to. Your muscles have to generate force Almost almost like a dead stop. Not quite because you lowered yourself on the box, but almost like a dead stop. Yeah, there's no recoil kinetic energy that kind of springs you back up. Totally. So you get great gains from doing this. It's different. You build more muscle. Now, I love also using box squats with my clients because it helps teach clients how to squat better. Yeah, with this, depth. Absolutely. I, I would put a box underneath somebody and I'd have them focus on perfect form and the box was there to catch them if they lost their balance. And then they'd slowly sit down and stand back up. It was one of my favorite tools for teaching people how to squat. I ended up using it all the time. Yeah, I totally agree. I actually came across box squats uh, pretty much in the same time frame as chains and bands and kind of these, uh, these, these extra tools that um, uh, really help you to kind of isolate the different components of the squat. Um, and you know, power listeners were using these concepts and I kind of got into it and, you know, I, it was crazy the amount of, uh, strength that, uh, doing box squats really helped you to kind of, uh, address the, the, the biggest sticking point of the lift, which is at the very bottom of your squat and to gain strength there is, is very helpful. I, I also found, I know you, you mentioned, both you did mention, you know, the inability to use uh, the rebound effect or kinetic energy. Right. But I also, and so having to go a little bit lighter because of of that. Um, but I also found that this helped a lot with clients to break through like a, a mental uh, plateau of loading the bar more mm. because you had this seat to fall back on totally. and that safety kind of net was there. Uh, uh, psychologically. Yeah. yeah. Psychologically, it would help you sometimes load. I, I remember this for myself. Mm. I remember the very first time I ever put three plates back when I was you know in my mid twenties, like that just seemed so so unbelievably heavy when 225 was heavy for me back then. And I, I remember uh, lifting with these guys and them being like, we'll do box squats and I'll be there to spot you. And I'm like, I can barely do 225. I don't want to do 315. And he's like, I just want you to feel the weight. But I remember after I did that, 
how much control and strength I felt with 225. And so I've seen it used like that. And I, I, I believe they some that's some of the strategy that they use over at, uh, which, what's the famous power? West Side, uh, West Side Barbell, yeah. right? They're, I mean, they're huge advocates oh, of yeah. box squats. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's part of every routine there. So even though uh, a lot of times you have to go lighter because you don't have the rebound effect, sometimes the opposite is true. Sometimes I, I had clients or, or people that would feel stronger or feel safer because they had a box underneath and then allowed them to actually increase the weight. And then when they then pulled the box, they were able to control more weight. Right. Now, the way you program this, it can be programmed, obviously, on leg day. It could be your squat workout can be all box squats. Or the way I like to use it and the way I programmed it in MAPS Anabolic is I like to do a few sets of box squats before regular barbell squats. I found that to be yeah. a great place to put it in the workout. Next question is from Marissa Lane. We're often told to cut sugar from our diet, but considering sugar seems to be in almost everything and is often hidden, where do you even begin? You know, you know what's interesting about sugar is that the definitely has negative health effects in the context of a uh, a calorie surplus, a high calorie diet. So if you're eating more calories and you're burning and your diet is high in sugar, you get like this real double whammy. It's a double whammy. Yeah, you're eating too much, plus you got the sugar on top of it, and then you start to see a lot of problems. A low calorie diet that's high in sugar, over time still there's some evidence that that's not good for you, but the a lot of the negative effects are, are, are way, way less. It's, uh, it's quite negated because the calories are low. So it is, you, you, yes, cut sugar, but as a strategy to also cut calories. It's not just like eat whatever you want. If it's low sugar, it's not a big well, deal. A simple, a simple tactic for, uh, that I've used for clients is just avoid the process sugar. Oh, easy. I mean, because right. here's what happens. Because sugar gets such a bad rap, people start to freak out about fruit. Mm-hmm. If I have a client who all of their sugar comes from fruit, I'm not tripping. Of course. I'm not worried at all. So, And, and, it's a, and that doesn't mean that those calories don't count you know, and you can't overdo fruit. Absolutely, you can do those things. But I think the first big step in, in addressing too much sugar in the diet is to eliminate all the packaged processed bullshit that you're getting. The, the yeah. it drinks that you're probably getting it in, the snacks that you're getting it in, get it out of that. And, you know, and what's nice about that, and I've talked about this before, it, fruit tastes like candy again. Yeah. When you get rid of all the the, the super, the, and this includes like your your artificial sweeteners too, because those, the, what is artificial sweeteners? What are they, uh, five or seven times sweeter than- They're way more potent than- Yeah, they're, it's, it's five or seven. It's like a crazy number. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, think even more than that, maybe. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. Like they're a lot sweeter- than even real sugar. So even though it doesn't come with calories, and there's an example of that, right? Like it doesn't come with calories, so we think it's okay to do, consume a ton of it, but it also changes your palate. Like then when you bite into an apple or have some grapes, they taste bland. So just by getting rid of all the processed sugar uh, and still allowing yourself to introduce fruits, uh, I think that's a great strategy. Then the next strategy with, with fruit for me is I, I tell clients to target berries first. Uh, the bananas, the apples, the pears, the grapes, um, they tend to have higher amounts of sugar and less nutrient dense as things like berries. So berries, higher in fiber, higher higher in, in micronutrients and lower in calorie uh, and lower in sugar. So uh, target berries as your main source. Doing those things, if you're just, as long as you're not over consuming on the fruits, you're probably going to be okay. Yeah. yeah, I found too, like with sugar, you got to look at like the behaviors of when I eat sugar. And for me, it was like late at night or, you know, when I'm, when I'm done with dinner and everything, there's this period of a couple hours beforehand where I'm just hanging out with, with my wife and we're watching TV and it's, it, you get these cravings that sort of come out of nowhere. And it, it it's one of those things. I know it's a common thing that people like struggle with because it's, it's it, your body. Like if, especially if you're eating a decent amount of carbs in your diet, like your body's just like tends to, you know, gravitate in that direction. If you have a sweet tooth, you have a salty tooth, whatever, you know, the, you know, your, your propensity lies in terms of like snacky foods. But so I tried to up my fats a bit and up my satiating foods, you know, especially around dinner time to help kind of carry me through that. Yeah. A big one is just what you drink. Uh, I, I know when they look at sugar consumption, a huge part of that has to do with sodas and fruit juices. Um, I've done that with clients, just 
don't drink any any flavored drinks. Just drink water, yeah. and their calories drop uh, consider- con- considerably, and their sugar drops quite a bit as well. That's the I would say that's the first place to start, and then the processed foods would be the second place. If you do that, you're fine. You're, you're probably going to be – it's like when people ask me about sodium. Like, what about sodium? If you're not having any processed foods, salt the shit out of your food, you're going to be okay. Next question is from Mackenzie Blumen. How do you go about building up your maintenance calories if you're already well accustomed to weightlifting and want to lose fat? The task feels impossible oftentimes as a petite woman with a very low BMR. Okay, so she's referring to speeding up her metabolism, getting her body to burn more calories. And one of the parts of that formula is to lift weights, which she says she's doing. Now, step number one, I would identify, I would look at your workout program and make sure that it's really focused on strength and building. Sometimes people in the situation say, but I'm lifting weights. I look at the routine and it's all it's like hit. Cardio. Yeah, all hit and circuit type training. So I would say for you, focus on strength, like pure strength, a, a traditional. How long are your rest periods? Yeah, that, that'll tell me a lot. Yeah, a traditional strength training routine, do that. But let's say you're doing that, okay? You also need to send another signal along with that to get the metabolism boost up, which is, believe it or not, simply eating more calories. Slowly increase your calories. There's an adaptive process that happens when you reduce or increase your calories where your metabolism uh, starts to, to adapt. And cutting your calories gets your body to become more efficient with calories. Increasing your calories, no joke, speeds up your metabolism a little bit. Your body... Uh, doesn't feel like it needs to be as efficient because it's getting more calories. So I would say take your current caloric intake, whatever it is, and just bump, even if you're if you're afraid, just bump it by a hundred a day, 100, 150 a day with a good traditional strength training routine. Start there. If you start to get stronger, you build a little bit of muscle, then you can bump it up another hundred and and do the slow reverse process of eating more calories. Now, if you're you're an experienced lifter, so you and hopefully what comes with that is your understanding of programming and you're cycling through different types of training programs. So, what I like to do with someone in this situation, if you're experienced, is I actually want to take you to the, the most novel type of programming I can with with the exception that I'm I'm avoiding things like hit and plyometrics and things that are mm-hmm. you know flirting with you know cardiovascular endurance right um, but there's a lot you can you can train very novel for example if you look at like our the our program library like right? if you look at maps anabolic compared to maps aesthetic they're very different even though they're 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 both traditional they both put muscle on they both can speed them if you train more like one than the other, I'm taking you to the other one. Or if you've never done something like like a map strong or power lift or yeah or strong. power lift, um, you know where you've done you've never like just focused on the four main lifts and and put really good programming into that. I'm gonna that's what I want to do when I'm also trying to increase somebody's calories because what naturally happens when you when you change the programming up that radically. You'll you'll notice like an appetite increase. You're you're gonna burn more. You're gonna burn more because it is so foreign to the body. It's so novel. It's sending a new signal to adapt differently. That normally also requires or wants more calories. So it's the perfect time to also try and increase calories. So and you only know what that looks like. You know if you were DM'd or emailed our customer support, you could say, hey, I'm following this type of a program. What would be best to transition into a bulk now? And I could give that recommendation. But, you know, if, if I'm not getting that information from you, then you have to assess that yourself and decide, you know, what do I t- tend to gravitate towards and then train something, you know, as different as or as novel as you can while also increasing calories. Yeah, I ha- if I had to guess, I would say Map Strong would be the best uh, program for this, M- mainly because it's got unconventional lifts in it that m- a lot of people typically don't do. And it's still a strength building, mm-hmm. muscle building program. So if I had to guess without even knowing what your workout looks like, 
um, the odds are that would be the novel it's a safe routine. bet because it's yeah, it's super novel. Right, it's, it's more it's it's most likely this person trains more like anabolic or aesthetic. It's right, those, those right. are traditional bodybuilding, traditional mm -hmm. strength training type of a program. Strong would be novel enough that you're going to see a major response. Well, it's funny because it's that that program has we, we've gotten more DMs from women who followed the program, but who that's said that they've burned. That's why. Yeah, yeah they yeah. haven't yeah. done any of these. Exercises. That's exactly yeah. that, is, and that is the reason why, right? And you know, it's not like it's a better program for women. It's just that it is so novel for most women to train that way. Yeah. That that's why I think we got such a huge it's a response. Great opportunity right. for growth. Absolutely. But yeah, combine a good routine with a slow increase in calories. Of course, make sure you eat a high protein diet. So about one gram of protein uh, per pound of body weight. Slowly increase the calories and watch your strength go up. And you should be able to uh, increase your BMR. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So what's up, YouTube fans? We are on YouTube as well. Shut Go to you. Mind Pump Podcast so you can watch us and listen to us if you want to see how handsome Justin is. It's really, really handsome. Um, also, you can find us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and everybody's favorite, Adam, at Mind Pump Adam. We love Adam! The exercises that you should be doing if you want to maximize your leg development. We just said back squat. That's for sure. But there's a lot of squat variations. The front squat in particular, I think, is should be up there. You have exercises like the deadlift. Now, the deadlift does work the back, but it's also mainly, in fact, a hip exercise. So it's phenomenal for the legs. Bulgarian.